Welcome to Using Your Teacher Voice, Episode 6. Today I want to talk a little bit about digital citizenship. As you know, that's uh, an area of interest of mine. Um, next week I'm going to be talking with my freshman class, um, the freshman class at our school, um, giving them some advice and some tools that they can use to make some good decisions online. I think a lot of teachers shy away from these discussions uh, because it's not an easy discussion really to have. Um, Many times I think that uh, teachers focus on the rules, on the yeses and the noes, the do's and the don'ts, the goods and the bads. Uh, they look at a certain situation and say, this is what you should do and this is what you shouldn't do. And while those are important discussions to have, uh, they're not the only discussions. Because what happens when a student sees a situation that's different than one that they've talked about? You know, they've got this one situation, this one response, but how do they apply it to the next situation? And so what I like to do is I like to give, you know, when I talk about these things, I like to look at them in a broad sense of, you know, how do you uh, talk about it in a way that gives you options and, and something that you can do the next time to give you some tools and some um, um, kind of a framework in which to make your decisions uh, for the best decisions for you in your situation. Uh, I think that's also important, too, because when you talk about, you know, people... Uh, each everybody has a different um, you know goal in mind and uh, they're in a different place and the way that you are today isn't going to be the way you are you know five six years from now and so these rules hopefully will will allow you to make those decisions that work for you in your situation um, so when I talk to the freshmen next week this is kind of the short version of what I'm going to talk about with them um, the the I'd like to break it into three pieces the first is <clears throat> an understanding that, Anything that you put online never goes away. It never goes away. That when you put it up there, someone can, whenever, later on, for whatever reason, find that information. Um, you hear stories all the time about people, you know, uh, have old posts from, you know, two years, three years, five years, eight years ago, drug back up and used against them, uh, you know, in an embarrassing way or in a mean way. Um, it's not so much that, you know, companies want to save this, uh, this stuff for you so that somebody can use it against you later on. Uh, I think just we need to understand, students need to understand that we live in a data economy, that all the data that is collected out there is valuable to somebody, some company, some business, some search engine, something. Um, and, and they may not know what is valuable now or what will be valuable in the future. Um, so... It's real easy to collect large amounts of data, and it's relatively inexpensive to save it. So because we don't know what will be needed in the future, what we want in the future, we just save everything. And so that's why, you know, you hear these stories of things being drug up from, from so far long ago. You know, an example of the data economy for students is that if you were to go on Amazon and look up oven mitts, you're going to buy your mom a set of oven mitts for her birthday go to Facebook, you're going to see that same ad pop up on Facebook for those same oven mitts. And then you might start seeing oven mitts around. It's because Amazon has that cookie on your computer that works with that Facebook ad to deliver you that content. Later on, that, that information will be sold to somebody else who will start to market you things like pots and pans and oven uh, aprons, kitchen aprons and kitchen hats and whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's all valuable to somebody and it can be sold and traded. The second thing I think students need to understand about uh, online uh, presence is that once you put something online, you really lose control of it. You don't know who's going to use it, when, and how. Uh, you know, again, the easy the easy example, you know, you hear the stories of a girl shares a picture with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend shares it with a couple of his buddies. Don't trade. Don't show. And don't show. And of course, they do. And then within a week, everybody in the school has seen the picture. Those things spread exponentially fast. Once you put something out there, you lose control over it. You can say, please don't show it. But you don't have any guarantee that they won't. And if they do, there's no way for you to stop it or to get it back. Even if he takes that picture, just pulls it up on his phone and then just holds it out and says, hey, take a look at this, he shared it. Okay, and that information, in a way, has been delivered. And so then somebody will tell somebody, oh, so-and-so put a picture up and whatever, whatever. These things just spread and spread and spread. 
um, <clears throat> it is really important that uh, students understand this. In a larger context, um, a lot of the sites that you go to, they collect your data, but you don't know how it's being used or why. Facebook has partnered with um, a software, a facial recognition software company. Um, so facial recognition software works really great straight on with a neutral pose. Uh, that software works really well. But the problem is, how do you get the same results from different people, you know, from people from different angles and different emotions? When you put your pictures up on Facebook, it's tagged with your name, so we know who you are. So, and then you get a variety of, you know, straight on, sideways, large groups, small groups, far away, you know, close up. And they're often tagged with some sort of descriptor or a uh, 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 or or something that allows you know these researchers to say, okay, this is sad, this is happy, this is whatever. In essence, you know, Facebook is making money off of you posting your pictures for your friends and family. Once you put data out there, it is out of your hands, and you have no way of controlling it after that. I think the third piece that students need to understand when it comes to um, an online presence is that so many things that you put out there, um, when somebody else runs into it, they may not have the context to understand what you were doing or why you posted that. And then that interpretation um, may not be an accurate reflection of what you, what you were doing and why you did it. Unless a person really delves into your social media and, and tries to track, you know, um, who you communicate with and what kinds of things you communicate with them, you know, a singular post may or may not be a perfect reflection of you. It may not even be close. Um, for instance, if, if one of your friends posts something that that is not nice about somebody else, you know, they, they, they talk about how frustrated they are, upset they are about something. And then you come along and then you favorite it. Okay. Are you piling on that person like your friend was? Or were you just showing support for your friend saying, I got your back. I know the situation. And I know why you posted this and I agree with you and I, I got your back. Is it a sign of support or is it piling on and, 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 tr and making comments about that other person? And the person who comes along and sees that post without that context and understanding who you are and what you were doing and why, they might make a, a, a judgment about your reputation or about your personality or about your character. Uh, and those things go a long way. Those things go a long way. And again, the stories are plentiful. You know, coaches taking away scholarship opportunities, uh, colleges denying you know, entrance um, because of what somebody posts, job offers being taken away. Uh, because these posts are a reflection of you, but they don't necessarily give you the whole reflection. So that's kind of the short form of the of the um, you know discussion that I'll have with the freshmen about digital citizenship. Again, this is a this is such a huge thing right now uh, with our students. Um, it, it's something that's important. It's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, but we need to look at it in a way that really makes sense and really helps them, not just now, but in the future.